there is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. Watch out for the traffic around here. That peddler's wagon like to run you down. You better keep your eyes open if you can. Uh, I'll try. Where are you going, Denton? No place. That right. Let's see, to get yourself a haircut. Just let me pass. Or a shave, maybe. Yeah, that'd be a good idea, wouldn't it, boys? Please. Or a bath. Yeah, that's it. And some clothes that don't stink. <laughs> That'll be a nickel. Here you go, Charlie. Al? How about a drink, Charlie? Uh, well... Please, I'm dry as a bone. You got any money? Well, can't you put it on my tab? Well, see, Al, it's like this. You didn't pay last time, or the time before that. Matter of fact, you haven't paid all year. You know I'm good for it. Afraid it's cash on the barrel head from now on. I need a drink, Charlie. Just one. Not today, Al. Who'll cover me for a shot at rye? Don't do this to yourself. Somebody? Anybody? Don't, Al. Just don't. One drink. That's all. How about it, Miss Smith? No can do, Al. Liz here don't pay for drinks. Other people pay for her drinks. You see what I mean? Go get yourself cleaned up. I'll stop by if I can and see how you're doing. Sure, sure. Yeah. But I need one thing first. I'm thirsty. I can't make it if I'm thirsty. Just go. Do it for me. For old time's sake. That's how it is then. I'm sorry, Al. It's the way it has to be. If you say so. See you later, everybody. Well, hello, Denton. Get what you need in there? No. <laughs> I'll bet you didn't. But I'll tell you something, Denton. I know how you can get yourself a drink. Yeah, how? Uh, you see that peddler's wagon come through? Well, he's setting up in front of the hotel. Why don't you go ask him if he's got a drink? Go on, ask him. Maybe he's got what you need. Okay, I'll do that. No. Oh. Ah. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> Did you trip, Al? Ought to pay more attention. My boot was right in front of you, and you didn't even see it. I'll try and be more careful. Portrait of a town drunk named Al Denton. This is a man who's begun his dying early, a long, agonizing route through a maze of bottles. What he really seeks is not another drink, but a fresh start. Al Denton would probably give an arm or a leg or a part of his soul to have that. The question is, where does a man turn when the last of his luck finally runs out? In a moment, Mr. Denton will make the acquaintance of a newcomer who just might be willing to help along with the third principal character in our story. Its name, Colt. Its caliber, 45. Mr. Denton hasn't met either one yet, but when he does, he'll find that their true function is to give him what he needs more than anything else. A second chance. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Mr. Denton on Doomsday. Starring Adam Baldwin, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Hey, Al, I just thought of something. You want a drink so bad? Well, guess what? I got me a bottle here, and it's still half full. Be ashamed to let it go to waste. So why don't you use some to take a bath? <laughs> that sting, Al? I'll bet it does. Come on, open your mouth. Somebody get him a bar of soap. You want some more? <coughs> Yes, sir. 
Well, first, let's see some appreciation. Let's see you pay for the drink in your own special way. A little song, Al. How about it? A uh, song? You know the one I mean. <clears throat> How dry I am. How dry I am. How dry I am. Pretty good, Al. Here you go. Open wide and wet your whistle. <laughs> Johnny, can't you break that up? I don't like it any more than you do. The misery they give that guy. Well, what else can they do for a good time? We ain't never had a circus come through here. Please, Charlie. <laughs> you want the rest of it, Al? Here you go, take the whole bottle. Oh, it's all broke now. Come on inside, Dan. Let's get a fresh one. Please, Al. Just leave it. There's nothing left. Here, can you stand up? Oh. Thank you, Miss Smith. What's that? Huh? On the ground. Oh. You mean this? Well, that's a nice looking gun. Colt 45 Peacemaker, that's what it is. You pecking a gun now, Al? Oh, it's not mine. Well, whose is it? I don't know. Somebody must have dropped it in the street. <laughs> you weren't so bad with a gun in your day, were you, Al? Well, that was a long time ago, Miss Smith. A very long time ago. Well, you know something? This is the first time... The very first time I've held a gun since... Uh, well, I can't remember how long it's been. Too many bottles, Al. Yeah. Way too many. Come on inside. I'll get your towel so you can wipe your face. Thank you kindly. Will you tell me one thing? If I can. Why do you drink so much? I don't really know. I just got in the habit one day and then kept to it. Kept to it till, uh, till I ended up like this. I didn't used to. I always had a clean shirt, hair combed. Uh, that could change, you know. A shave, a bath, some different clothes. You don't have to go on this way. I want to change. You don't know how hard it is. Here we go again, boys. Well, looky, looky. He's still here. Got a girl to help him. No more trouble, fellas. Let's hear our little songbird one more time. Charlie, will you give me a hand? Hold on. Didn't you hear what the man said? Hey, Denton. I got a new bottle here, and it has your name on it. Only first, I want to hear three more choruses of How Dry I Am. Let's have it. No, Al. But if I do, he'll give me a drink, Miss Smith. The devil with him. I'll give you a drink. You won't have to do this for it. How dry. <clears throat> oh, how dry I. Oh, Al. Al. All right, Rummy. Now you can come in and get your drink. Tell Charlie to set one up. You've been a good boy. Oh, thank you. Wait a minute, Denton. Huh? A gunfighter. What do you... Where'd you get the gun? Oh. Oh, you, you mean this? I uh, found it. I found it over there in the street. That a fact. Maybe it fell off the peddler's wagon. Looks good in his hand, don't it? Yeah, like it fits. Been a while since you used one of those, hasn't it, Rummy? Well, yes. Speak up, Rummy. I can hardly hear you. Been quite a while, hasn't it? Quite a while. What say? A long time. Well, maybe you'd like to try it out. Maybe. Maybe you think you could even outdraw me. <laughs> That'll be the day. Sure will. No. No what? No, I don't know how to use it anymore. But the time was you did. Let's see you try. I told you I wouldn't know how. Stop it. Come on. You and me, Denton, will draw whenever you're ready. That's enough, Dan. It's not funny anymore. Out of the way, miss. The gunfighter and me. We're gonna have a little showdown. Charlie, where are you? Come on, Gunner, right here. Let's pull. I'll give you first chance. How about it? Dan, stop this! Come on, boys. She's right. This ain't a joke. Go back to the bar, Charlie. Can't you see we got private business out here? Listen, Dan, I put up with a lot from you boys, but... Here. I'll give you a break, Rummy. 
I'll do it left-handed. What do you think of that? I'm telling you to break it up. Now, we both got our guns in our hands, okay? Nice and easy. That fair enough for you? Miss Smith, Ch- Charlie, tell, tell him... Uh, please tell him... To... Ah! You see that? He shot the gun right out of his hand. I don't believe it. Al, Al, are you all right? Oh, Miss Smith, please tell tell him it was an accident, will you? I, I, I don't want any trouble. No trouble here anymore. No trouble at all. Now, please, mister. What? Listen, I didn't mean for it to go off. Must be a hair trigger. I just wanted you to know that. But you got to understand, it was an accident, pure and simple. Come on. Let's get out of here. Better get that hand looked at. That was no accident. That was some real shooting, Al. Come on in. Get a drink of the good stuff. I don't know what happened. Go on. You're entitled. But I wasn't even aiming. Well, however you did it, I'd say you got your eye back today. I don't think so. You must have been practicing or something. I ain't seen shooting like that since... Since... (laughs) I can't even say... And against Dan Hodling, too. It isn't even my gun. I just found it. Have another drink. All you want. On the house. Hey, Remy! Mr. Hodling, I swear it was an accident. I I didn't even draw. I I sure didn't mean to... Put that glass down and face me, Denton. I want to see you take a bullet in the stomach. Dan, it's over. Give that guy a break, will you? Charlie, take this gun quick. Here, I don't even want it. Did you see that? Shot the lamp off the ceiling without even looking. Fell right down on him. Knocked him out cold. I ain't never seen nothing like it. Well now, Al, I'd say you got your eye back all right in space. I I, I wasn't even aiming. He don't need to. He shot over his shoulder. How'd you do that, Al? I I I can't really say. He was looking in the mirror behind Charlie. How's that for a trick shot? Mr. Denton, maybe you let us buy you a drink. What? Take the bottle. What did you call me? I didn't mean no offense. No, I asked you what you called me. Nothing. Nothing, Mr. Denton. I I didn't call you anything. (gasps) That's what you called me. Mr. Denton. You hear that, Charlie? He called me Mr. (laughs) Go on. Have all you want. No, thank you, Charlie. I've had enough. Al, are you all right? Oh, yep. I'm just fine. I think I'll go across the street and... Have a shave. Where's my gun? Leave it, Dan. Come on, let's go. Get away from me. Hey, Rummy! What did you say? Get that player piano going. Leave it be, son. I said start it up again. I want to hear some music with singing. What's the matter, boy? Too quiet for you? Well, let me give you a hand. Didn't you hear me? I said stop! You're the one that's going to be singing from now on. You pick the tune, and you sing it, and don't call me Rummy anymore. Well, sir, things are sure going to be different from now on. I hope you're right, Charlie. I hope to heaven you're right. I just wanted to tell you, I think things are going to be all right from now on. I believe that. What things? <laughs> don't you understand? You don't have to worry about bullies like that anymore. I heard what Charlie said. Charlie? You're as good with a gun now as you ever were. Well, that's what he says? I remember too, Al. And I think he's right. Oh, I was good. I was real good. I was so good that once a day somebody would ride into town and make me prove it. And every morning I'd start my drinking a few minutes earlier. Until one morning, the guy who asked me to prove it turned out to be 16 years old. I left him lying there on his face right in front of the saloon. I left him bleeding to death with my bullets in him and he was 16 years old. It doesn't have to be that way. Oh, doesn't it? I've seen it before. It's going to start all over again. Every fast and fancy man who owns a gun will come riding down this street. But you know something? This time it will be different. 
Afterwards, it'll be me lying there face down, bleeding to death. Oh, Al. I think I'll go in and get a shave. Now, I'd like to look proper on the day I die. Afternoon, Mr. Denton. I don't want anything. How's that? Well, you're a peddler, aren't you? I can't use anything you've got. Oh, yes, I'm a peddler. Pots and pans, utensils, herbs, medicines, liniments and tonics, men's, women's, children's clothing, farm implements and what have you. A little bit of everything, you might say. Well, nothing for me, thanks. No? Well, well, what I need, you don't have. Are you sure? I'm positive. Excuse my bad manners. Fate's the name. Huh? What? Henry J. Fate, like it says on the wagon. And you're Al Denton. How do you know that? I couldn't help but overhear the trouble you had a little while ago. Hope it worked out. It did, for now. I knew it would. You knew? Oh, it always does, one way or another. The way it was supposed to all along. You see, I meet a lot of people. They all have different needs. I've learned to read them. Try to have something for everyone. Is this yours? What's that, Mr. Denton? The forty-five Peacemaker. It's an expensive gun. Yes, I'm sure it is. It was lying in the street when I came out before. I was thinking maybe it fell off your wagon. Oh, no, no, no. That doesn't belong to me. It's yours now. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it is. Good day to you, Mr. Denton. And I'm sure it will be a good day. You know something I don't? Oh, not at all, not at all. But when we make changes, it's bound to be a good day. That's always how it seems to work out. Don't you think? Yeah, sometimes, maybe. Good day to you. Well, hello there, stranger. Sorry to bother you, Ned. Bother me? Why, you couldn't bother me, Al. Could he, Jake? Not on your life. He's the man of the hour. Now, don't say that. Come on in. We were just talking about you. How we knew you way back when, though I'm the one who knew him the longest. Why, I knew him when he first rode into town. How many years ago was that, Al? Well, too many. So, what'll it be? Shave and haircut? I was thinking just a shave. Uh, if I could owe you a save for a few hours... Uh, Nothing doing. It's on me. I'll uh, wait till you're finished. I'm done. Just slap a little of that bay rum on my face, Ned, and the chair's all yours. Here you go, Jake. Specialty of the house. Two bits? Two bits it is. And one for my friend Al Denton here. It's all the same to you. I'll pay my way from now on. Don't you worry about it. Why, it's all over town what you did to that no-account kid. We won't be seeing him for a while. You did us all a real service, I'd say. Now, why don't you just sit here in the chair... And I'll make a new man here. That's very kind. Both of you. I won't forget it. Say, is that the gun? That's it. You want to take it out of your belt and set it down, Al? I can hold it for you. Oh, that's all right. Just the shave will be fine. And a haircut and a hot bath. Now, how would that feel? I got some water heating up in the back room. Then won't you be the man, all right? Clean boots. Hmm. Now, who is that guy in the mirror? Why, Mr. Denton, I almost didn't know you. Good evening, sir. New shirt makes a big difference. Yeah? All right, all right, who not? They said this was his room. Well, they did, huh? Who, who are you looking for? Tall man. Usually doesn't wear his gun. Has blonde hair. Like you. Oh? Sounds like that describes... It describes a fella named Al Denton. Supposed to be the top gun here. That wouldn't be you by any chance. It would? Then I got a message for you, Denton. Message from who? Pete Grant. You heard of him? Pete Grant? He's heard of you. Well, what's the message? It's real simple. You don't even have to write it down. Pete'll be in town tomorrow night. Ten o'clock. He'll meet you in the saloon. Well, for what? A drink? <laughs> Not hardly. At five minutes after ten, one of you will walk out. <laughs> I don't think it'll be you. Is that it? That's the end of the message, Denton. You got an answer for him? Well, 
look, you tell him. You tell him he doesn't even know me and there's no call to... Yeah? You tell him. Tell Mr. Grant I'll be here tomorrow night. I'll wait for his pleasure. That's just what it'll be. His pleasure. Ah, that didn't take long. Not much time at all. Just enough for one shave, a haircut, and a bath. Back already? That's all they took. You deliver the message? That I did, Pete. How'd you look? What do you mean? Then they say he's as good as he ever was. Is that how he looked? I don't really know. It was night I and know I... No, it was night. It was an hour ago, you dumb, thick-headed steer chasing... Easy, Pete. You're all riled up. You got the nerves again. Grab your chow. And you better get some sleep. Sure, Pete. Whatever you say. Soon as I water my horse. Fast he is, then. I bet he's got a case of the nerves, too. Nerves like a sickness. I'm glad I ain't him tonight. Oh, missed it by a mile. Try this one. Now take it slow and easy. Ten feet off at least if I could just stop my hand from shaking. Al? Oh, it's no good. You'll get it back. You just need to practice. Ah, uh, it's too late for that. I should have known. It takes more than a shave and some new clothes. It takes more than a hot bath and a shine of my boots. That takes care of the outside, Miss Smith. Not the inside. I don't believe that. You're sober now and your eyes are good. Yeah, well, look at my hand. It won't hold the gun steady. Not long enough to get my aim. What are you doing? I want to get out while I still can. And go where? Away from here. Far away. Al! Al, you can't run! Oh, no? <laughs> Watch me. I gotta run before it's too late. I gotta run fast and run far. Al! Al, come back! Evening, Mr. Denton. Who are you? Oh, it's you. Mr. Fate. That's my name, and peddling's my game. Yeah, sorry, but I don't got no time to talk. You shouldn't, you know. Shouldn't what? You shouldn't run away. That's what you're doing, isn't it? How do you know that? I told you I learned how to read people, what they need. And you don't need to run. I don't. <laughs> no, I guess not. I should stay here and get shot to death for no reason at all. I guess that's what I should do. Curse this gun. Curse the moment I found it. Oh, my, no. Don't curse it, Mr. Denton. Use it. Well, I would if I could. And now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some packing to do. Now, hold on. I think I might have what you need. There. Yes, indeed, Mr. Denton. I'd say this is exactly what you need. I told you before, you don't have anything I need. Not even this? What the... It's one of my potions. You might call it that, or an elixir. Either way, it'll help solve your latest problem, Mr. Denton. Oh my, yes. It'll help solve it in no time at all. Snake oil, that's all you are, a snake oil salesman. I knew it when you wrote in. Don't be too swift in your judgment. Allow me to explain. I call this my developer. How's that? More to the point, my fast gun developer. Very special formula. Now hear me out. The man who drinks this becomes the fastest of the fast. He'll be able to shoot a hole through a silver dollar in midair at a hundred feet or better without even aiming. And best of all, it lasts for ten full seconds, guaranteed. Ten seconds. And after that? After that, the user's on his own. Ten seconds. I could empty it. Gun in half the time, or I used to. 
Care to test it? Now? Go ahead. Feel free. Proof of the pudding, so to speak. What's in that bottle? An ounce of whiskey or sugar water? Nothing of the sort, I assure you. Taste it. Well, let me get this straight. You're telling me all I have to do is drink it? Mm-hmm. The developer will do the rest. It works almost instantly. And if it doesn't? Then what have you lost? A few seconds? A simple test, that's all I ask. <sighs> doesn't taste like much. Your time starts now. Remember, ten seconds. There's your target. Where? The street lamp. Down at the end of the street. See the flicker? Are you kidding? I couldn't hit that if I was standing right in front of it. Go ahead, Mr. Denton. Your time's almost up. Draw. Eight, nine, ten. I don't believe it. There you go, Mr. Denton. Your time is gone. Now, the gun would probably be of no more use to you than a bottle it'd be to a bowl. What'd you put in that? Here's a fresh one. Drink it a few seconds after 10 tonight, just at the moment Mr. Grant walks into the saloon. You know about Grant? Oh, I'm afraid everybody knows it's all over town. How much do I owe you? Oh, why nothing. There's no charge for this. You might call it a service. That's what it is, a service of Henry J. Fate. Just so you remember at some future time, the night that Fate stepped in. Look at the time. Coming up on 10 o'clock. I don't think that Grant fella's gonna show. Well, it'd sure be a whole lot easier that way. Save me from getting the place shot up. I tell you, Al, don't miss. One shot is all it'll take. Yeah, you're right about that. You gonna fix that lamp on the ceiling? I might. Then I might not. Maybe I'll hang it on the wall like a trophy with a plaque underneath and Al Denton's name on it. You do that, Charlie, and I'll even pay for the engraving. Sounds like Al now. Yep, right on time. Hello, everybody. We've been waiting, Al. Knew you'd be here. You've been Ned. You're looking good tonight. Thanks to you. Don't worry, none. That gunfighter won't show. Probably too yellow. Ah, uh, who ever heard of Pete Grant anyway? After tonight, nobody. That's who. How about a drink, Al? Uh, not right now, Charlie. You shouldn't be here. I don't have much of a choice, Liz. But... I thought you were going away. I thought so, too. But here's how I figure it. A man's got to play the cards he's dealt. Because there's no place it's safe. Wherever you go, someone will find you. You mean Pete Grant? Yeah, him or someone like him. All the Pete Grants of the world. You don't have to prove anything. Go, right now. Just go. It doesn't matter where. You've got your life back. Why do you want to throw it away like this? Ready for that drink, Al? No, thanks. I think I'll pass. Suit yourself. It's not ten o'clock yet. There's still time. I see. Now that's just it, Liz. There isn't any more time. I've wasted too much of it already. Get on a horse and ride. Go to another town. Start over. I could meet you there. If you want me to, we could... Listen. Who's that coming? That would be him. Liz, do one thing for me. What, Al? This little bottle. It's my medicine. What kind of medicine? Never mind. When he calls me out, you pull a stopper and hand it to me before I turn around. Then get rid of it. I don't want anybody to see. But what is it? A chance. About the only chance I've got. What'll it be, mister? I'm looking for somebody. Uh, who might that be? At the end of the bar. You Denton? That's right. I heard about you. Oh, yeah? What did you hear? Heard tell you're supposed to be fast with a gun. Well, I'll tell you something, son. You got a good chance to find out. I aim to do that. Well, look, I got no quarrel with you. That's not all I heard. I heard you were a low-down, dirty coward. You shouldn't believe everything you hear. Turn around and step away from the bar. You sure there's no other way to settle this? I'm plenty sure. Well, all right, then. If that's your pleasure. Now, Liz... I'm ready. What's that young fella doing? Sneaking some kind of drink. Al, look! He has a medicine bottle too, just like yours. Go ahead. Make your move. Al! I got you, Denton. And I got you. But that can't be. You're both right. You shot the guns clean out of each other's hands. 
This is a push, boys. No winner. Let it end here. Your hand! You won't be shooting anymore with that hand, Al. Not anymore. A couple of the fingers are gonna be stiff from now on. Yeah, I reckon they are. But that don't make any difference. You were fast. Fast on the draw. The way you stood up, that's something to tell your grandchildren about. And the way it looks now, you just might live to have some. Here, wrap this handkerchief around to stop the bleeding. I don't need your help. No, I guess you don't. Not now. You know, you won't understand this right away, son, but you just got a blessing. Two fingers stiff like mine, for good and all. That's what it is, a blessing. Took me a whole lot of years lying dead drunk in the street looking up at the sun before I learned it. And you? You won't have to go through that. Get away from me. Get him, Pete? No more than he got me. Then it's over and done. Yeah. It's over and done. Let's ride. you over to Doc's so you can get that hand looked at. Thanks, Liz. There's no need. It's gonna be fine. Just fine. Oh, horse. Time to move on. Mr. Henry Fate, like his wagon says, a dealer in everything. Utensils, pots and pans, liniments and potions. A fanciful figure in a black frock coat, who also deals from time to time in second chances. And while there are some who say that he exists only in the dreams and imaginations of men, others say that he does exist because he must, even if it's only in the twilight zone. There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. He say... He said the bus to Hart City. Hartford? That us? No, dear. When's our bus? I don't know, Edward. Why don't you ask? Ask who? The nice man at the ticket window. I want a window seat. Yes, dear. If they don't give me a window seat, I'm not going. I'll stay right here on this bench all night if I have to. You can't do that. They won't let you. Won't let me sit by the window? Then you go on without me, Eleanor. Pardon me. Oh, hello, dear. I'm sorry to bother you. Not at all. Are you waiting for the Portland bus by any chance? What did she say? Portland? Portland, Maine or Portland, California? Neither. I'm sorry. We're going to the Elder Hostel in Fort Ritchie. My friend Mary went there last year and she said it was lovely. I'll ask at the window. About your bus, too, if you like. Do you mind if I leave my suitcase here just for a minute? Of course, dear. Oh, you know that. Thank you. I'll be right back. Excuse me. Mm. The bus to Cortland. What about her? It was due a half hour ago. Yep, a half hour ago. When will it be in? It's kind of hard to say. Road slick, maybe a bridge or two out. That's bound to screw up the schedule. Well, do you have any idea when it'll be in? She'll be in when she'll be in. That's all. I told you that the last time you asked, miss. The last time? The last time I asked you was right now. Look, all I want is a civil answer from you. You're getting a civil answer, miss. 
Trouble is, every 10 minutes, you're up here requiring one. The situation just doesn't change that rapidly. You want to know about the Cortland bus? It's late. It was late when you first asked me a half hour ago, late when you came back 15 minutes later, and it's late now. All the asking in the world ain't gonna push it, none. This is the first time I've been at this window to ask. Either your eyes are bad, mister, or- My eyes are fine. I don't have any trouble reading the timetables, now do I? Maybe you're the one with the problem. Maybe you don't hear very well. Or maybe you don't remember things. Maybe you'd best see a doctor about that memory of yours. I don't... I don't need to see any doctor. Now, I've had just about enough of this conversation. Goodbye. And you needn't worry. I won't bother you any further. Here she comes again. Are you all right, dear? Yes, I'm fine. Oh, I forgot to ask for you. Ask about what? Your bus. You wanted to know about the one to Fort Ritchie. Oh, we don't need to know. You don't? I found that schedule you brought us before. That's nice. I'm glad, but but I didn't bring it to you. What did she say? Oh, but you did. The first time you came over. You didn't ask us to watch your bag then. My bag? Yes, here it is. You were going to the window, but you didn't want to leave your bag here. Not the first time. And you're saying I spoke to you on, on two different occasions? That's right, about your bus. Is something the matter? No, no, nothing's the matter. Millicent Barnes, age 25, young woman waiting for a bus on a rainy November night. Not a very imaginative type is Miss Barnes, not given to undue anxiety or fears, or for that matter, even the most temporal flights of fancy. Like most young career women, she has a generic classification as, quote, someone with a head on her shoulders, end of quote. All of which is mentioned now because in just a moment, the head on Miss Barnes's shoulders will be put to a test. Circumstances will assault her sense of reality, and a chain of nightmares will put her sanity on the block. Millicent Barnes, who in one minute will wonder whether she's going mad or whether she's just stumbled into the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Mirror Image. Starring Morgan Brittany and Frank John Hughes, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Well, shall we run through it again? Thank you, no. Good. I wondered, well, I, I just noticed... Noticed what? That the bag in there... Where? In the baggage room behind you. That bag, the, the one on the floor in front of the others. What about it? Well, I'd, I'd like to see it. You would? Yes, it looks familiar. What is this? Some kind of game? No game, honestly. Uh, it looks just like mine. It's it's identical, even to the handle being torn, the, the red name tag, the sticker on the side. Lady, that is your bag. You checked it. <laughs> That's not my bag. You want it back? It looks just like mine, but it's not. It can't be. That's my bag over there by the bench. Is it? The bench against the wall, at the end where I was sitting. Oh. Uh-huh. My bag was there, but it's not now. That's because you checked it. Well, how did... Then I'd like to uncheck it, if it's mine, as you say. Claim check, please. What? All you have to do is show me a claim check. The one I gave you when you checked the bag. I, I don't have one. Here's my bus ticket, my wallet, my keys, and the rest. See, that that's all I have in my purse. No claim check, no suitcase. But that's absurd. You just said it's mine. Nothing I can do about that. State law. When I saw it in the baggage room just now, I'd swear that was the first... The first time I... Why don't you just go over there and sit down, miss? You're either walking in your sleep or you're hungover or something. Just go back there and sit down and breathe through your nose and let me read my magazine. When the Cortland bus comes, there'll be a loud noise, a door opening, and people will come in here. And then you'll know the bus has arrived. But I... 
I never checked my bag. I... I don't feel very well. Where's the ladies' room? Straight across the lobby, other wall. There goes that girl again. I see her, Edward. Can't make up her mind, can she? Must be on some kind of drug. Oh, you hush now. I'll be finished cleaning the floor in a minute, honey. You go right ahead. Thank you. Are you all right? Yes. Yes, I, I, I'm all right. I'm perfectly all right. Why, don't I look well? Why, no. Honey, you look fine. You look just fine. Just like when you came in before. What do you mean, before? You were in here just a few minutes ago, remember? That wasn't me. Sure was, honey. Same coat, same little rain hat. That was you, for sure. Not that many people in the station this time of night. Plus, I never forget a face. <sighs> Look, I, I don't know what's going on around here. Somebody takes my bag, somebody says I'm always asking questions about the bus. Now you tell me I've been in here before and... Just take it easy now. Everything's going to be all right. Well, of course it is. There there's nothing wrong to begin with. There, there isn't a thing wrong. I think the only problem around here is that you people need some sleep or something. You say I came in the ladies' room. Big as life. And then I suppose I walked back out into the waiting room, right into this very door. <laughs> so far, yeah. Here, wanna try? Oh, thank you. This guy's easy, though. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Let me get you a cold cloth, honey. I don't think you're well. I don't need one, thank you. I... I must be overtired. That's it. But I'm gonna be fine. Now, let's just do a quick reality check. Look out there. What for? Tell me what you see. Okay. Now, tell me about the woman. Tell me if... No woman. Are you sure? All I can see is a kid playing a video game. Hi. Oh, hi. I'm on level 13 again. That's nice. Whoa. I, I, I wanted to ask you, um, who are you talking to just now? Who do you think? Want to play, huh? Play? There goes. I lost. Oh, well. I might have another quarter in my purse. Nah, uh, four's enough. Is it? That's what you gave me already. I still got two left. Of course. And that was just a minute ago, wasn't it? Yeah. When you're coming out of... You know. The ladies' room? That guy at the window. He won't give me change, but you did. Four quarters for a dollar. Thanks. You're welcome. So you want to play? You mean, like before? You didn't play me before. You said some other time. Well, want to now? This game, it's called Tomb Rider. Cool, huh? There's the graveyard. When the dead people come out of the ground, you have to shoot them before they get you. Or a tombstone pops up with your name on it. See? After I was standing here talking to you, where did I go? Did you see exactly? How come? Uh, I'm trying to retrace my steps. I, I think I lost something. Same place you were sitting before, over there on the bench. Where are the suitcases? The suitcase? Yes, of course. It has to be mine. Right where I left it. On the floor. Last chance. For what? Last game of the night. Before they shut off the machine. Some other time. I gotta go home anyway. Home. Yes, you you do that. Time to go home. Here. Right here. And the tag with my name on it. How can that be? Miss? Yes, what do you want? Your wallet. I, I think it fell out of your purse. Oh, thank you. I I must have dropped it o over there somewhere. You did. I saw it, so I brought it over. A person can't get very far without a wallet now, can they? Thank you again. Thank you. You mind if I share your bench? No, I, I, I don't mind. Bus is late, isn't it? It seems to be. It's, it's over half an hour late now. You mean the Cortland bus, don't you? That's the one. I was supposed to be in Syracuse by 10. Planes were all grounded. Took a cab from Binghamton. Darn thing skidded and ran into a tree just a few miles outside of town. Had to walk back to the bus station there. That's quite a story. 
You look awfully wet. <laughs> no kidding. I'm about four hours from Binghamton, and about five minutes away from pneumonia. <laughs> mm, is that right? Forgive me, miss, but you're not ill, are you? <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I really truly don't. Well, is there anything I can do? I don't know how to answer that. It's, it's just that a whole bunch of odd things have been happening. Odd? I've been seeing things. What sort of things? <laughs> oh, Maria, I don't think I should tell you. I, I think you'll want to move to another part of the room if I do. Or call the police or an ambulance or something. Why don't you take a chance and tell me? You never know. I might be able to help. I don't even know you. Oh, sorry. Uh, Paul Grinston. I'm from Binghamton. Millicent Barnes. At least I... I was. And what does Millicent Barnes do? I'm a private secretary. I quit my job here on Thursday, and I got another job in Buffalo, and that's where I'm going tonight. Well, trying to go. To Buffalo. But everything I do, people keep telling me I've done it before. The man who sells the tickets, he... He said I kept asking him where the bus was, and the, the woman in the restroom, she said I'd been in there before, and I hadn't been. And my bag here, my, my bag, where? Right there, by the edge of the bench. Oh, oh, for a second there I thought I, I thought it was starting all over again. I think you'd better tell me the whole story. Well, that, that couple over there, that, the, the man and the woman, and the ticket man, they said I'd checked it, and... And there was a bag almost identical to mine in the baggage room. I saw it. Then when I looked again... Go on. Please. Well, that doesn't make any sense, but... When I was in the ladies' room, there, there was a voice from out here, and I thought I heard... What did you hear? My own voice. I thought I heard myself talking to someone. Who? That boy. Where? Oh, he, he must have gone home. You don't believe me, do you? Well, I wasn't there. It has to be some kind of a... delusion. Do people have delusions that they can hear? I don't know. I, I guess they could. That's what they are, I'm sure. Some kind of delusions. But it isn't just hearing things and seeing things that don't exist. It, it isn't just that. Why did the old man selling tickets and... And that woman in the powder room, and the couple on the bench, and the boy playing the video machine. Why did they all say they'd seen me before? I can't say. That's a tough one. What is happening? What on earth is happening to me? I must be sick. I, I must be running a fever, but I'm not even warm. I don't have a fever. No fever at all. Do I hear? Touch my hand. Can you feel me? <laughs> yes, I can feel you. You're really here, if that's what you're worried about, and you don't have a fever. I'm not some sort of crazy person. Really, I, I'm not. I, I've i never had any problem like this. I I mean, I mean a problem with my mind or, or anything like that. Of course you haven't. And there is an explanation someplace. There's a reason. Maybe... Maybe what? Maybe there's someone here in this building who resembles you. Could be that, you know? Or, or maybe... Somebody, um, somebody playing a joke or something. Is that possible? No, that's too fantastic, and that doesn't explain the bags or anything. If there was someone, where is she now? This is a small bus station. Where, where is that person? When you get to Buffalo, will someone be there to meet you? Why, yes, I think so. I, I, I'm sure of it. A, a friend of mine. She's supposed to pick me up at the station. Maybe you should call ahead since we're running late. Let your friend know you won't be getting in for a while. Yes, that's a good idea. There's a payphone over there. Good. Oh, but I only have one quarter, and that man at the window... Here, this ought to be enough. I can give you this dollar bill. Forget it. Oh, you're very kind. I'll be over there. I'll watch your bag for you. Thank you so much. Good luck. Would you do one thing for me? Sure. What do you need? I need you to ask the man at the ticket window something. Would you mind? Not at all. Ask him if... But you don't have to ask him. Just look over his shoulder into the storage room where they keep the bags and see if there's one that looks like mine. The same handle, the same kind of tag hanging off it exactly. And if there is, tell me. Would you do that? 
No problem. I'll be right back. Please deposit one dollar and seventy cents for the first three minutes. One fifty, one sixty. Oh, I don't have that much. Would you like to call collect? Yes, that that would be wonderful. One moment, please, while I get your party on the line. Hello, Judy. It's me. Where are you? Did you make your bus all right? Yes, I made it. But now the connection is late. The one to Cortland. Good thing you caught me. I was just on my way out the door. It'll be a while yet. I I guess it's the rain. So when should I meet you? That's just it. I I I don't know. Tell you what. I'll call the bus station here and ask them what time it's due. As soon as I find out, I'll get in the car. I'm so sorry to do this to you. It's not your fault. Don't worry about it. I'll be there. <laughs> Thank you so much. See you in a little bit. Number seventeen to Cortland, Syracuse, and Buffalo. Now arriving at gate two. All passengers, gate two. That's it.、Uh, Judy, are, are you still there? Judy. Gate two, departing in five minutes. Need a ticket? Uh, no, I- I've got one. Luggage? What? You want to check any luggage? All I have is this briefcase. Go right through that door, then. Lines outside. It's finally here. I thought we'd have to stay in a motel. Hope the bridge didn't wash out. Well, better late than never. You can go now. Right. Um, I have to wait for someone. I think she checked her bag. Could could you look? Medium size, leather handle with a red tag on it, and a sticker on the side. You mean the young ladies? I don't see it. That's because she picked it up already. Took it through. No, I don't think so. I I don't see it back there, but. It's possible she didn't check it at all. Oh, she did all right. Picked it up as soon as I made the announcement, just before you walked up. Wait a minute, that's not true. No. She went to use the phone. Phone's over there. Nobody's using it now. See? How can that be? Glad to have her out of my hair. If you want to know, <laughs> real nervous type. Couldn't make up her mind. <sighs> Number seventeen, Cortland, Syracuse, and Buffalo. Boarding now. <laughs> you are here. Where did you think I'd gone? To make a phone call, but I did, and and now the bus is here at last. I guess we better get going.、Uh, let me get my bag. Your, right here where I left it. Thanks for watching over it for me. Let me get that for you. Looks heavy. Oh, thank you. You're very nice. No problem. <laughs> really, you're being very kind to me. Oh, forget it. You're easy to be kind to. More than just kind. I, I mean. Come on, we don't want to miss it. Just set it down right there, ma'am. I'll put her in with the rest. Be careful now. It's got all my prescriptions. Don't you lose it. I won't lose it, ma'am. What goes in comes out. I'll even give you a claim check for it. Okay? There you go. What did he say? Come along, Edward. Hello, sir. Hi. Want that in here? Yes, just this suitcase. Give the claim tag to the young lady. <gasps> oh. Something the matter, miss? Look. What? That's my bag. He's got it. Not that one. The other one. The one that looks just like it. Where? In the luggage compartment. You see it? It's already been loaded on the bus. Who gave you that suitcase? Which one? With the red name tag on the handle, right there. Some woman. I, I don't remember. Try. What did she look like? Well, it's hard to say. Half a dozen people lined up all at once. Miss Barnes. Millicent. Wait. <laughs> You just lie there for a while. Oh, but I can't. Yes, you can. I'll put my coat under your head. On my way. You and the lady coming, or aren't you? We'll wait for the next one. Next one ain't due till seven in the morning. That's all right. Got a long wait. Okay, we're on our way. You want another wet towel for your forehead, honey? What? Oh no. I'm shutting off some of the lights. When not in use, turn off the juice. That's what I always say. Well, I better get home. I hope she feels better. Thanks for your help. It's all right, but offhand, Mister, I'd say she needs some looking after. 
More than a towel for her head, you know what I mean? Good night. How are you doing? The bus. It couldn't wait, but there'll be another one. You didn't get on. I don't care. I'm this late already. A few more hours won't make any difference. It's quiet now. Nice and restful. So you can just take it easy on this bench here. Keep your feet up. Where are you going? Nowhere. I'll sit on the other end. Stay here. I wanted to tell you... Yes? What I've been thinking about. Go ahead. Something. It's very odd, but I've been remembering something I heard or read a long time ago. I, I, I don't know where. About different planes of existence. Different worlds that exist side by side. How do you mean? Parallel planes. That's what they call them. And each of us, each of us has a counterpart in this other world. And sometimes, sometimes through some, some sort of freak occurrence, there's a break. And the two worlds converge. The counterpart steps outside into our plane. And to survive, it has to take over. Take over how? Replace us. Move us out so it can live. That's a little metaphysical for me. I remember reading it someplace. Each of us has a twin in this other parallel world. An identical twin. Maybe. Maybe the one people saw tonight. Millicent, there's another explanation. There's gotta be. An, an explanation that, well, something that has more reason to it. I can't explain it, but somehow I know that's what happened. My counterpart, this, this other woman. Forget about it, please. Look, I, I just thought of something. I've got a good friend who lives in Tully. I'll call him and see if he can't bring his car down here for us. He could probably run us into Syracuse. I'll call him, all right, Millicent? Shall I call my friend? I guess so. Excuse me. I'll tell you what I think. I think she's got a leak in her attic. Parallel planes, counterparts in another life. You got a thing for sick people? Is that it? Poor kid. I don't know what's gonna happen to her. You gonna call your friend? What? Your friend in Tully. The one with the car. I don't have a friend in Tully. But she needs help. Medical help. I figured it would be easier that way. I figured she'd come along if I told her that. Poor, poor kid. I don't know what else to do. H have you got a phone in there? Who you wanna call? The police, I, I guess. They're the ones who'd know how to help her. To tell you the truth, she kind of gives me the willies. I just assume she'd get out of here one way or another. I don't much care how. Where's your phone? Come around to the office so she can't hear. Okay. Say, where'd she go? What? Take a look. She ain't on that bench no more. Is... is anybody in there? Where are you? Where did you go? I know you're in here. Unless you really did get on that bus, but... But you didn't, did you? You're too clever for that. I only want to ask you a question. Then I'll go. Who are you, really? And what do you want? Millicent, are you in there? Yes. Oh, good. You had me worried there for a minute. I'm fine. I made the call. I just thought it's let up outside. How about a breath of fresh air while we're waiting? All right. It's late. Yes. Yes, it is. You know, sometimes, on a bad night, a, a person could use some help. Some, sometimes we all could. You've been really nice. I don't know what to say. Neither do I. Except that I do want to help you. Sometimes talking to someone can make all the difference. I, I may not have the answers you need, but there are people who do. Why is that police car here? Is there trouble? No trouble. We'd better go inside. Mr. Grinstead. Yes. You the one who called? No, he didn't call you. Why would he call you? Easy now, miss. What are you doing? Get your hands off of me! You know a place to take her? 
Paul? I think it's best if you go with them. No one's going to hurt you. Paul! Relax, lady. Come over to the car. No! No, I won't! What are you doing? Be careful with her. She's kind of fragile, a little confused, that's all. Paul, don't let them take me! Why are you doing this? I told you, be careful with her. She's not a criminal or anything. Don't worry, Mr. Grinstead. We'll hold her for observation, get her some help. You did the right thing. Stop! Uh, let, let me uh, go! All right, come on. Get right. Uh, okay, here we go. Get it all squared away? Yeah, they're they're gonna take it to the hospital for observation. What was she talking about anyway? All that business about another life? I don't know. Part of her her illness, I guess. We've been driving for quite a while. Miss? Where are you taking me? Don't worry, you're not going to jail. This is all a misunderstanding. The doctors will figure that out. B but I'm not sick. Then you'll go on home. I don't want to go home. No? I'm on my way to Buffalo. I have a new job there. W would you like to see the letter? It's in my purse. Got your ID, too? Certainly. Let's have a look. What happened back there, Miss Barnes? Nothing. Must have been something. Mr. Grinstead said you were upset, behaving irrationally. Did he? Said you had some wild story about people out to get you in the bus station. Oh? Well, there were a couple of pretty unsavory characters hanging around. Haven't you ever been in a bus station? He a friend of yours, Grinstead? Not at all. I only met him a few hours ago. And you thought somebody stole your luggage, got on the bus, tried to pass herself off as you? Look, officer, it's really very simple. I haven't slept in almost 24 hours. I've been riding buses and it's raining and every connection is late. Wouldn't you be a little on edge? That's no reason to run around disrupting the place, bothering everybody. He tried to pick me up. That's why I was so upset. Well, that's not what the station master said. Well, what does he know? I mean, he's pretty peculiar himself. Stop the car right here and let me out. I'm begging you. Sorry, we can't do that. Look, I'll take a cab all the way to Buffalo. Then none of you will have to put up with me anymore. See? There you go. There I go what? You seem like a nice enough person. Why don't you just take it easy? If you'd seen the things I saw, heard what I heard. Calm down now and be a good girl and I'll have to cuff you. You wouldn't like that now, would you? Oh, you do that! Do it! Look, I don't care anymore. I think you better let him check you out real good when we get to Braywood. Braywood? What is that, a, a loony farm? Emergency medical facility. They'll run some tests, see if you need any medication. But my friend's waiting for me. What will she think if I'm not on the bus? Your friend have a name? Yes, of course she does. It's Judy Jensen. We've known each other since we were in school. In Buffalo. That's where the bus is going. I'm supposed to be on it. She was going to pick me up. We'll get word to her. Yes, do that. She'll tell you there's nothing wrong with me. One call, that's all I ask. All units, possible robbery on Elm Street. This is Unit 4. South 2000 block at Mayfair. Are you in the area? Negative. Well, boys, somebody better roger me fast, because I need a unit out there right now. Why are you wasting your time like this when there's a crime going on? Look, I'm not violent. I've never been arrested in my life. And now you're probably going to cost me my job, when all you have to do is call my friend. Do you really want to drive around for another hour with someone in the backseat who's broken no laws while real criminals are running around on the streets? Well, we'd have to fill out a report, a lot of paperwork. Be at the hospital till dawn. We already have to fill out a report. We could release her OR. Then she goes right back to what she was doing, hurt herself or someone else. Oh, in the friend's custody, I mean. Your friend? Is she willing to drive out here and sign an affidavit? Oh, I'm sure she would if you'd ask. We could at least make the call. This is Unit 4. Kelly, we're heading over to South Elm. Meanwhile, do me a favor. 
Patch me through to a Judy Jensen in Cortland. I have your call, Unit 4. Hello? Miss Jensen? She's gone to bed. Who's calling? Uh, this is the Tully Police Department. Do you know a Millicent Barnes? Uh, yes, I'd say I do. We have Miss Barnes here, and we were wondering... Is this a crank call? This is Lieutenant Anderson of the Tully PD. Miss Barnes says... Oh, she does. Well, it just so happens that this is Millie Barnes, and I don't appreciate crank calls in the middle of the night, and neither does Judy. We just got in from the bus station, and if you don't mind, I'd very much like to take a hot shower and get some sleep. Is that all right with you? Good night. No. 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 You have any coffee? Vending machine. Other side. When's the next bus? Seven o'clock? You got four and a half hours. Take a snooze on the bench there if you want. You'll be all alone. No noise. I even shut off the video machine. This place is like a tomb between now and morning. Thanks. I might do that. You want to check your briefcase? No, I'll keep it with me. Thanks. What the... Hey! What's going on? Nothing's going on. Thought you were going to take a nap. I was about to, but I walk a few feet to the machine, turn around, and my briefcase is gone. Well, sure it is. What does that mean? Oh, dear Lord, she was right. And, and you're the one. It was you all along. Hey, hey, simmer down. You're playing tricks, aren't you? Stupid, hick-town tricks. Does that keep you from getting bored? Stealing people's luggage, moving it around, putting it back when they're looking the other way? Is that what all this is about? The briefcase isn't there because you picked it up and brought it over here and walked out onto the platform. I did that? You saw me? Sure did. Same coat, same shoes, same everything. Didn't say a word. Only question is, how did you get back through that door without me seeing you? Of course, I was reading my magazine, so I guess I wouldn't have noticed. Hey, who's out there? Hey, that's my briefcase! You, stop! Who are you? Where are you going? Please, what, what are you doing here? Tell me, I have to know! What do you want? Obscure metaphysical explanation to cover a most disturbing phenomenon. Reasons dredged out of the shadows to explain away that which cannot be explained. Call it parallel planes, the myth of the doppelganger, or just plain old-fashioned insanity. But whatever you call it, you'll probably find more where that came from if you take a good look around the next time you're forced to spend a cold, wet, particularly inhospitable night at a bus station or some similar out-of-the-way place, one that's located just over the borderlines of the Twilight Zone. Black Leather Jackets, starring Marshall Allman with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Earl Hamner Jr. Heard in the cast were Elizabeth Lido, Jason Bradley, Christian Stolte, Doug James, Fernette Lebo, Jeff Lupitan, Roger Mueller, Meg Thalkin, Vince Amari, Alex Sopiner, Carl Amari, Kurt Nabig, and Jason Mallow. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, the American Forces Radio and Television Service, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors, and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking.
You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Why here? Looks like a good place. For what? Information. They won't know anything. Maybe they will. Hey, Steve's right. Look at all the trucks parked out front. I say we wait till we come to a town. The last sign said 35 miles. Let's go in. This is nowheresville. That's what we want, Freddy. Isn't it? We need to fit in, disappear. If we draw attention... I checked the map. It's mostly small towns. You think they won't notice us? They'll know we're not from- I said, let's go. Hiya, boys. Sit anywhere you like. Got some seats at the counter. Thanks. Three cold ones? Sure. Fine by me. How's your water? That all you want, blue eyes? I just wondered how your water supply is. Uh, pure as can be, down the mountain and over the dam. One double shot of H2O coming up, and, uh, yeah, two long necks. Uh, make it three. That's more like it, honey. Any, uh, towns around here? You bet. Stay on the highway and you'll hit Fairview. Lots of bikers stop at the motel just inside the city limits. Fairview. Nice place, is it? Oh, it's okay. Kind of quiet. Shops, schools, you know, not much to do. Sounds just right. Yeah? You boys looking to settle down? We might. No kidding. Well, what do you know? Saw your choppers out there. Figured you were just passing through. Hey, they have, uh, they have houses to rent in Fairview? He means pads, cribs. Some place to crash. Well, I couldn't say, but you could ask. Where? There's an office on Main, R.C. Jones Real Estate. Uh, park your choppers down the street, though. Don't want to give them a heart attack. We'll remember that. Here's from a bill for Annie. Sure thing. Coffee, burger, and a Coke. How you keep the change? Your tip. Why, thank you kindly, George. You come back and see me on your next run now. You know it, doll. You boys need menus. I got a burger basket special with fries. No thanks. Sure. Strong young fellas like you. We don't eat. He means we already ate. What? That's it. We scarfed. This morning, we really chowed down. You, uh, you dig? Oh, I dig you loud and clear, Daddy-o. Say, where are you from, anyway? Not around here. Come on, let's go. Right. You got it, Steve. I mean, Big Daddy. Hey, you didn't touch your beers. That's okay. We're not thirsty. Here you are. Hold on. Something wrong? This ain't all for me. Isn't it enough? It's too much. Here, let me give you some change. Keep it. Yeah, for your tip. Is that cool? Well, now that's mighty generous. <laughs> you boys come back and see me now, anytime. Two specials, Fran. Table four. Sure. Oh, those boys stiff you? No, Harry, that's just it. They gave me $23 and, and 17 cents for three beers. Mm, maybe they're from another country. Well, maybe so, Harry. But wherever it is, it must be a long, long way from here. Three strangers on motorcycles dressed in black. We call them Steve and Scott and Fred, though their names aren't important. 
They look a bit dangerous, but in truth, they're just passing through, at least for now. They're on their way to a small town with tree-lined streets and white picket fences. A quiet town in the Midwest. You take a look in the eyes of these young men, and you'll see something deeply mysterious. Because they are most definitely not from around here. The truth is, they have arrived to lead us all into the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Black Leather Jackets, starring Marshall Allman with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Well, this must be the place. Amanda Drive. That's what Jones said. The old Anderson's house. Knock on the door and tell him we're here. I'll open the truck. Don't look like anyone lives here. The for rent sign's still up. That's because they're just moving in. Probably going to meet us. What if they don't show? Well, we wait an hour, put it in storage, cost them extra. Go on, knock. Okay. Nobody here. Give it another try. Locked up tight as a drum. Well, well, looky here. A couple of creeps messing around our property. You the guys that live here? We ain't the fuzz, that's for sure. Got your stuff in the back. Open the door and we'll move it in. Hey, careful with the big cases. They're fragile. Whatever you say, pal. Somebody got the key to the house. Watch your feet, bozo. You're walking all over my grass. I might want to smoke it later. <laughs> Get it? Grass? Smoke? I still need the key. Well, we don't. Yeah, we don't need no stinking keys. <laughs> <laughs> Scotty? Yeah, I'll take care of it. Done. Hey, how'd you do that? He didn't even touch the doorknob. He just stared at it. Quit, John, and start humping boxes. But it was locked. I tried it myself. Ain't you got any furniture? Chairs, rugs, stuff like that? I said move. Now. Yeah, move it. Okay, Mac. Yeah, creep. Make like a leaf and shake it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, boys. We got work to do. Martha? Yes, dear? Here's that movie you wanted to see. Be right there. What in the... Something wrong with the TV? I don't know. Do you have it on the right channel? It's not the set. All the lights went dim for a second. Did they? I thought it was just the kitchen. It was the whole house. Anything still running in there? The dishwasher? No, the dishes are all put away. There it goes again. Maybe it's the antenna wire. I doubt it. It slipped loose once before. Well, that's easy enough to check. What do you see? It looks all right to me. Then what do you suppose? Martha, come over here. See something? The roof next door. There, against the moon. What is that? Looks like some kind of electrical device. Now, that wasn't there this morning, was it? No, the Andersons didn't leave anything. Must be something those men put up. Right, the three who moved in. Wouldn't that be just our luck? What? Not only are they motorcycle riding hoods, they're ham radio operators. Is that bad? You don't know what it does to TV reception. I have a good mind to go over there. Honey, please. Daddy? What is it, Ellen? I'm not sure. I had my radio on while I was studying, and all of a sudden, it began picking up these weird voices. What did I tell you? Ham operators. What's that? We can go without television for one night. Tomorrow, we'll find out what's to be done about it. First thing I'm going to do is see if they have a license. For what? Do you think you ought to? Those young men look so unfriendly. You mean the ones who moved in next door? Does anybody know their names? No, but I'll find out. 
I think two of them are brothers. Odd types to have in this neighborhood. They don't really fit in somehow. The other one has blue eyes. How do you know? Uh, they were unloading the truck when I came home from school. Lots of boxes. Electrical equipment, probably. And these long silver metal things like... like giant tanks or capsules or something. You stay away from them, young lady. You make it sound like an order. It is. But you don't even know them. Your father's just concerned for your safety, dear. Go upstairs and finish your homework. <sighs> I'm not going to wait till morning. I'm going over there right now. Stu. Hello? Anybody here? Yeah, what's it to you? Hello there. I'm Stu Tillman from next door. No kidding. Been having a little trouble with my electricity flickering off and on. You boys wouldn't be ham radio operators by any chance, would you? <laughs> <laughs> what's so funny? Big Daddy here wants to know what's so funny. Yeah, ain't that a crack up? Who are you boys anyway? We're monsters, Daddy-o. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Yeah, we got a lease on the place. That okay with you? Where did you come from? From outer space. Woo! <laughs> Take us to your leader. <laughs> all, right, all right, now listen. I don't have to stand here and listen. Hey, watch your step, Daddy-o. It's pretty dark in here. Hey. Yeah, you might trip and fall. Hey, yeah, you might trip and fall what and are you your doing? head. What are you doing? Hey, you better keep it cool, mister. Or he'll disintegrate you with this ray gun. Take your hands off of me. <laughs> ah, look at him go. Stop it. <laughs> hey, 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 this cat can really dance. A real cool hey. cat. Yeah, move. I said let go of me. Go, Daddy, go. Ah, uh, not to worry. Spaceman won't hurt Earth creature. Ooh, Earth creature. Crazy man! You crazy. All right. I'm calling the police, then I'm calling my lawyer. No, you're not. That would be uncool. Definitely. Just you watch. You're some kind of hoodlums. Cool it. The police probably have warrants for your arrest. They'll be very interested to know where you are. I told you to cool it. Stay away from me. Look in my eyes. You're gonna be plenty sorry for this. Just, just wait till I... Forget it. What? Forget everything. There. Feel better now? Yes. Better. Stu? Stu, I was worried. Did something happen? Martha? What happened over there? Nothing. Nothing at all. Those men next door, did they do something to you? No. But you were going to talk to them about the television interference. Oh, that. Well, did you find out anything? It's... Not them. They're nice boys. Three very nice boys. Definitely. Morning, Mom. Gotta go. Oh, no. Not till you have your breakfast. But I'll miss the bus. Then you'll just have to walk. The exercise will do you good. I can't walk in these shoes. Here, I'm eating my toast, see? And your juice. Where's Dad? He decided to sleep in. I think he's coming down with something. Well, kiss him for me. Bye. Not so fast, young lady. I've got some scrambled eggs here. <sighs> that girl. Darn you, anyway. Hey, Trouble? You see that bus? Yes. I mean, yeah. I checked it out. What gives? 
drove off right in front of me. It's a game with them. They just love to make people suffer. Why would they do that? Beats me. Definitely. Uh, uncool. Just thank your lucky stars you don't have to depend on buses to get around. Stars are lucky? It's just an expression. <laughs> I, I understand a great deal about constellations. That is, the nature of galactic structure. But as to... Huh? I mean, I dig stars the most. They're really cool. So, they're lucky? That's a gas. So are you. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, one minute you talk like a professor, and the next minute you sound like a... What did they call them? Beatnik or something. Uh, thanks. You're a real cool chick. <laughs> there you go again. <laughs> well, why do you try to talk that way? Sounds like you've been watching too many old movies. I have? I mean, I have. Before I came here, I made a study of popular culture. Music, motion pictures, satellite, television. <laughs> You're a trip, you know that? Trip? Meaning to travel to another destination. I believe I understand. You need a ride? Well, you aren't going past the school by any chance, are you? Uh, I could. With me on the back of your motorcycle? Uh, why not? It can carry two passengers. That would definitely be cool. Well, there's a first time for everything. <laughs> Come on, little lady. Hold tight. Uh, tightly, I mean. Uh, up tight. Out of sight. Here we go. Just look at that. What is it? She's on the back of his motorcycle, our daughter. Come away from the window. I told her to keep away from them. She missed her bus and he offered her a ride, Stu. I'm sure that's all there is to it. I could have given her a ride. But you're not a handsome young man in a leather jacket, dear. Here! What? You can stop here. I don't see any school. It's on the other side of the park. Then why are we you stopping? You got me here so early I thought I'd walk. The park's so pretty in the morning. How much time do you have? My watch says 8.30. Class isn't until 9. Oh. <laughs> Would you like to take a walk? Sure. That bench over there is my special place. We could sit for a while if you want. <clears throat> okay. It's nice here, isn't it? I guess. I sit here sometimes and think. Try to figure things out. Like what? Oh, I don't know. For one thing, did you know you've lived next door to me for over a month and you've never even said hello? <laughs> hello. <laughs> My name's Ellen, by the way. I'm Scott. Hi, Scott. So, where are you from? Why do you ask? I just mean, where did you live before? Yeah. It's hard to describe. A long way from here. What city? I doubt that you've ever heard of it. Could be. Geography is one of my worst subjects. <laughs> Did you graduate already? Graduate? Have you finished school? Yes. Ten years ago. Ten years? You're not that old. I'm, I'm older than you think. My people don't show their age. My family's the same way. My grandmother lived to be 90, and you'd have taken her for 60 right up to the day she died. That's beautiful. It is, isn't it? She was such a sweet, happy person. Uh, not that. I mean, 
your hair. My hair? The way the, the sun's shining through it. I've never seen anything so beautiful. Now you're putting me on. Uh, uh <laughs> putting on? Teasing me? Don't you know that? What old movies have you been watching? I don't know. I like The Wild One. It's our favorite. Never heard of that one. May I touch it? Your hair, it's like gold. Thank you. I'd better be getting to school. Uh, already? It's getting late. No, it's not. How do you know? Look at your watch. You're right. It says it's still 8.30. How can that be? Has it stopped? Mm -hmm. No. See? Time is relative. It can slow down or even stand still. It can? Hey, uh, take the long way. So we can talk some more. All right. Tell me more about yourself. <laughs> okay. But only if you walk on this side of me. Why? Uh, so I could see the sun shining through your hair. It's time. I know that. Where is he? He got delayed. He'll be here. I'm not interested in excuses. Neither is the controller. We could try to pick up his image with the eye. Don't try. Do it. There he is, on the screen. Looks like he's walking in a park with a human female. Has he no sense of time? What do we do? Proceed without him. We can't. The controller told us. It's my responsibility. I'll make the decision. Sir. Reporting in, sir. Be at ease. Where's your brother? We can no longer trust him. What has he done? He's formed an attachment for one of the beings here. What sort of attachment? I'm not sure yet. A kind of alliance. He's with a young human in spite of our orders. Continue without him. I'm sure he's on his way now. I said continue. We have been in touch with all units. Good. The second wave has landed successfully and are now concealed as planned. With the arrival of the third wave, we will be in key positions throughout the continent. Excellent. The locals, are they suspicious? Not a bit, sir. They're a stupid race, exactly as our research told us. An inferior breed given to hatred, cruelty, making war, and killing one another because of greed. The universe can well do without them. You will receive your instructions for the final move in a few Earth days. Very well, sir. I'll tell brother as soon as he gets here. No time for that. We have to bring him in, now. Ellen? Hmm? Are you warm enough? Yes. It's a beautiful night. You can pull the blanket over your legs if you like. I'm fine, really. Just lying here, looking at the stars. The constellations are very strange here. Not as I was taught them. Scott, can I ask you a question? Sure. You won't get mad? <laughs> I couldn't get mad at you. Well, where did you come from, really? Does it matter? I suppose it doesn't, but you're so... Different from anybody I've ever known. Is that bad? No, not really. Tell me the truth. You're an exchange student, aren't you? At the college, from some place you'd rather not talk about. Only in a manner of speaking. Ellen, you... like me, don't you? You know that. Very much. Very much. 
Except when you do your Marlon Brando impersonation. <laughs> Will you want roses or something? <laughs> ah, come on, I thought I did a pretty good job. We studied your motion pictures. That's just it. You must have looked at nothing but old movies. People don't talk like that anymore. Well, what about the clothing? Oh, don't go changing that. Your leather jacket is way cool. At least we got something right, huh? You got a lot right. Trust me. Alan, do you know the word love? Of course, silly. Everybody does. What an odd question. What's odd about it? I mean, bringing it up at a time like this. Why would you? No reason. Oh. It's, it's just the word that's all over your newspapers, and your magazines, your music, your television. We encountered it all the time. We... Who is we? That's not important. Uh, this is a planet filled with hate, Ellen. Hate, violence, mistrust, bigotry. I don't, I don't know how someone like you survived this long. Me? I'm no different from most people. I haven't seen a report on anyone like you. A report? Scott, you talk in riddles. Sometimes you make me feel like an insect under a microscope. I'm sorry. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to. Please, I'd, I'd like to go home. Why? You've been lying to me. You're wrong. Don't make it any worse. I don't know why or what it is you're trying to hide, but I know you're not what you seem. And what if I'm not? Do you think you're in any position to judge me? Any of you? I said I want to go home. I'm truly sorry, Ellen. You can believe that or not. I, I, I guess I expected too much. Where have you been? I told you, I was riding around. Every day for the last five or six days? Yesterday when I sent you to the ship for food? Or last night when you were supposed to be on guard? You think I don't know? I've had the eye on you every minute. If you know, then why are you asking me? I told them before we came you were too young. You'd lose your head, run into situations you couldn't handle. There's too much at stake. I, I've done no harm. Haven't told her a thing yet, huh? No. Well, now you won't have the chance. We're too close to finishing this mission. Yeah, well, you better go to the control room. Your master's calling. You're a master, too, and don't forget it. From here on out, you're just along for the ride. You're not a good enough risk. The controller. I heard. Report. Bacteria Unit 59 reporting in. The test has been an unqualified success. Good. Unit 70 through 100 have reported the same result. What is your time estimate? 30 minutes to the reservoir. Approximately 24 hours for the bacteria to multiply to saturation. How soon before you see results? Within 30 hours, we should witness 50% fatalities. I estimate a total of 48 hours before total extermination. Have you coordinated with other units in your area? We have. And the result? There are 29 bacteria units near the water supplies in this state. We should reach complete contamination of the population within two days. Very well. Begin Operation Invasion Phase 2 at once. Yes, sir. At once. So, the time has come. Ah, brother. You've decided to do your duty. It's not what I was told would happen. Of course it is. Not this way. A portion of the population was to be saved. For study, if nothing else. The controller's word is final. Yeah, well not if I can help it. Where are you going? 
We've got to stop him. Doesn't matter now. He's too late to stop it. Who's down there? Come down. Now? I've got to talk to you. It's late. This is important. All right. Brother! You're there in the bushes! I can see you! Go back to the house and wait, Scott. You're making a mistake. These people aren't worth it. Scott, what's going on? Ellen, you've got to get away from here. What is it? You're in danger. I don't understand. Something terrible is going to happen here. Many people are going to die. I want you to go away as far as possible. I can take you where you'll be safe. You're frightening me, Scott. Please. What do you mean? What's going to happen? I can't... I can't tell you that. And... and it, it wouldn't matter if I did. Look, we've got to leave right now. Are you trying to scare me into running away with you? Uh, Ellen, listen to me. In 24 hours, every man, woman, child, cat, dog, anything else alive is going to be dead. Don't. Don't, please. No, not just in this town. All over your country. All over your world. My world? It's your world, too? No, it's not. What do you mean? Scott, who are you? Look up. Look up. We came from out there, Ellen. From beyond those stars. There, there, there are thousands of us here on Earth right now. Our people, we, we need room. We're, we're, and we're going to set up colonies here? I don't believe We've you. We've had bacteria units in every country on this planet for months. They have enough to poison the drinking water of the entire world's population. Scott, I'm going to walk with you over to your house. No, it's too late. Even if it is, I think we'd better wake your friends and let them get you to a doctor. No, you don't understand. You haven't seen, okay? The leader, the... The controller speaks to us from a giant television screen. All we ever see is his head. A, a metallic mask with slits for eyes, a nose, a mouth, but no lips. And his voice, that's... that's uh, Scott, I love you, but you're not well. You're... Oh, Scott. Ellen! 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 All right, Ellen, what's this all about? Oh, Daddy, I don't know what to do. You can start by telling me what went on out there. He woke me, throwing stones at my window. He said he had to see me. Daddy, I think he's lost his mind. He's never been this way before. Tonight, he was almost raving. Exactly what did he say? Crazy things. Th that he's some kind of spaceman, and they're taking over the Earth, and we're all going to die. <sighs> Poor boy. We'd better get him help. Ellen? Why aren't you in bed? Stu? Hold it. I'll explain everything. Sheriff Station? Deputy Harper? Let me speak to the sheriff, please. Um, Sheriff Farley's on vacation. Sir, can I help you? My name is Stuart Tillman. I live at 11575 Amanda Drive. Yes, Mr. Tillman. There's a mentally disturbed boy living next door. Is that right? And before he does any harm to himself or anyone else, I think he ought to be picked up. Honey, what's happened? Oh, Mother. There, there, now. What makes you think he's uh, mentally disturbed? He's been scaring my daughter with some kind of Man from Mars story. Claims he's part of an invasion force that's going to take over the world or some such nonsense. All right, Mr. Tillman, uh, let you stay right where you are. I will take it from here. In fact, I know exactly what to do. Definitely. Hey, Red? Yeah? Yeah, we got uh, control on Amanda Drive? Sure do. We'll be right there, Mr. Tillman. Thank you. Are the police coming? Yes, in a few minutes. That's good. Now, will somebody please tell me what's wrong? Sure, in a minute. Only... Only what? I wonder what he meant by control. Yes, 
Please, sir. This I, is I, an unauthorized I, transmission. No, sir, sir, I beg you to listen to me. You may speak. What we're doing is wrong. You question my judgment? No, we should save these creatures, not exterminate them. It's, it's true. They, they, they murder and hurt one another and are subject to unreasonable hate and prejudice, but the murderers, the cruel ones, uh, are, are the brutes found in any race. Th these people have capacity for love. I know it. Our research disproves that. They are a world of angry, frightened people. No, no, I tell you. I have lived among them. They learn love from their God, and they teach it to their children. There is more of love than hate here. There's no need to kill them. It's too late. Not if you order the plan to stop. For you, a defector, a traitor to your own kind. No, no, I'm not, I'm not. You are a traitor. This transmission is ended. Here they are now. Are you sure this is necessary? Yes. Please, Daddy, tell them not to hurt him. Ah, Mr. Tillman? No, I'm uh, Deputy Sheriff Harper. This is Deputy Miller. Evening, sir. Come in, please. Now, uh, what about this neighbor boy? Tell him, Ellen. I... I, I don't know where to start. All right, you know, your, uh, your father said he was mentally ill. What made you think that? Ellen! Ellen, please listen to me. There's no more time. Scott, I'm sorry. I didn't know what else to do. No, 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 no. Come on in, son. Uh, just tell me all about it. Don't listen to him. He's one of us. He's part of the advanced units. Now, oh, come on. Calm down. What kind of unit was that? No. Get out, Ellen. Run as fast as you can. It's too late for me. It's coming. It's almost here. Oh, Scott, you're only making it worse. Who are they? What have you done? Now, they told me you were ill, son, so I, I took the necessary precautions. These men are from the hospital. Now, now just stand right there. Stay away from me! Uh, we're gonna put this around you so you don't hurt yourself. Don't touch me! No, not a straight jacket. It's for his own good. Uh, got him! Got him! Uh, get us all the jacket off first! Get him! Get him! Easy get him now, get him. boy. No! Oh, don't fight it, son. <laughs> That'll only make it more difficult. No, 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 no! You don't understand, I'm begging you. I'm begging you, listen to me, please, please. No, no, please, no. No, no. You'll see that he gets help. Don't worry, folks. We'll take good care of him. And someday, I'm sure he'll thank you. You have a good evening now. Oh, they left his leather jacket. Can I keep it for him until he gets out? I don't see why not, honey. It might be a while, though. Oh, Mom. What am I going to do? There's nothing you can do, sweetheart. Except pray. It's for the best. You'll see. Now, come and sit down. I'll get you a glass of water. Portrait of an American family on the eve of an invasion from outer space. Of course, we know it's only fiction. And yet, you might think twice when you drink your next glass of water. Be sure it's 100% pure and, and not imported directly from the Twilight Zone. We'll return to the Twilight Zone in just a moment. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land of imagination. Next stop, the Twilight Zone. You're entering another dimension, beyond any limits known to man. This is the universe of imagination, a wondrous land of brave new stories from the far reaches of space and time. So fasten your seatbelt. There's the signpost up ahead. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone.
Man, what was that? Seagull, probably. No way. Let's move it, ladies. But Sarge... Now what are you crying about? Ramirez says it was a seagull. Yeah? From what ocean? You hear that, Manny? There ain't no beach around here. I didn't say it was. I said it could have been. It was big and black. And seagulls ain't black. Maybe it was a chicken. Paka, paka, paka. Now listen up, you jokers. We don't make it back by 1,200 hours. We miss chow. Bob it. Yes, sir. See that big rock? Which one? Side of the trail, about 30 yards. Climb up, take a peek over the edge. See if anything's moving in the valley. Sure thing, Sarge. Ramirez. Sir. Go around the turn to the trees. If Cemetery Road's all clear, give me the high sign. You got it, sir. I'll watch your back. Now move. Sarge wants to take a break. What about us? This ain't no democracy. You hear that? Artillery. Could have been thunder. I don't see any clouds. Do you see any clouds? Eh, the, the weather's crazy around here. The enemy's five kilometers away. That's what headquarters says. Why would they lie? So we don't turn, tail, and run. I ain't no chicken. Well, let's find out. You got the glasses? Right here. There's the rock. Go over and take a look-see. And keep your head down. Here goes nothing. What do you see? Crop fields. Grass. That's all. My turn. Wait there. Careful, there's a mortar for sure. Ha! <laughs> what do you know? It's raining. We better get gone. Ah, I'd like to take me a little shower first. Oh! Manny! Manny! You're bleeding. Go back. Can you walk? I said go back. There's a sniper. I ain't leaving you here. Nice shooting, Sarge! You got him! Take cover! Ramirez is hit. He's losing blood. Get him to the trees! You were right, right? Hang on, Manny. It was a crow. I should have known. Crows are bad luck. Move! He can't walk. Lift his legs! It's too late. But promise me something. <laughs> what? When the captain writes to my folks, Tell him to say, I didn't feel a thing. Get down! Three men on patrol. A mile from camp, a simple reconnaissance mission, or it should have been. The year, take your pick. The place, it might be any on a very long list. This army happens to be American, but there are a lot of uniforms out there. The men, though, never change. Their job is always the same, to stop the enemy. The question is, at what price? And what of those who wait, for whom their lives are beyond price? They can only pray that every man comes back alive. Some, however, never come back. This, then, is their story. Tale of those who fight and those who wait. In the Twilight Zone. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Ramirez, your son Manuel served in my company for... Ah, that's no good. Your son, Private First Class Manuel Ramirez, 
served under my command for the past 12 months. During that time, he exhibited courage and... Sir? Oh, Lieutenant, come in. I was just finishing the letters. Uh, are you ready for me to type them up? Uh, not quite yet. Oh, uh, if I'm interrupting... No, no. I could use a break. Coffee, Captain? Oh, I've had plenty. Help yourself. How many is it now? Hmm? What? The letters. Too many. One for every man we've lost. I always thought... What's that, Eddings? Isn't it the Pentagon's job to... Officially, yes. Then why... They were under my command. That makes it my responsibility. I see. Every one was somebody's son or husband or brother. They deserve more than a form letter. Frankly, sir, I don't know how you do it. Sitting here, writing? That's the easy part. Just the same time, I've been meaning to thank you. For what? I'm only the typist. Something I was never very good at. How many to go this morning? I've written Miller's family, Bobbitt's. Rough drafts, at least. That leaves Ramirez. I'd hope to have them done before the truck gets here. Well, you can always dictate. That wouldn't work. Why not? I'm pretty fast. I know you are, but I seem to be running out of words. At least the kind that mean anything. Well, let's give it a shot, sir. Uh, if you draw a blank, I'll, I'll make suggestions, and then I'll read it back. Uh, you have final say, of course. I'm afraid I'd drive you crazy. I tell you, we can do it. Uh, just sit me down, give me some paper. You don't know what you're in for. All right, uh... Ready when you are, sir. All right, this is what I have so far. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Ramirez, your son, Private First Class Manuel Ramirez, served under my command for the past 12 months. During that time, he exhibited courage and... Uh, uh, Dedication? Good. It was not a tip of your tongue, sir. I don't know what's wrong with me. Nothing's wrong with you. The fact that you took the time to write, believe me, Captain, that says a lot. His loyalty and motivation were an example to the entire company. It is therefore with the deepest regret that I write today to inform you. Hey, Lincoln. What? You seen the bodies? Yup. All bagged up. Where'd they put them? Behind the latrine, till the truck gets here. They laid them on the ground? No. They put them in the little chapel of dreams, done up in their Sunday best. What do you think? They shouldn't leave them out like that. Afraid someone's gonna steal them? No. Well, they're sure not gonna get up and walk away. We're talking about Manny. I went through basic with him. Me too. And Bobbitt, and the Sarge. I mean, this morning we had mess together. So? And now, what are they? Uh, dead meat, that's what. Missing and presumed dead. Same thing, isn't it? Once you're on the list, you don't come back just like Inglis and Willard and Ruiz and- Forget about it. We used to have a hundred guys. Now how many we got? 67. Who's next? I mean, if we don't watch it, we're all gonna be on the list. We're all... I said forget it, Cook. <laughs> this isn't war games. You wanna make it home in one piece? Then keep your head screwed on straight or you're done for. You got that? I, I just don't wanna end up like... like I was nothing. We could bite the big one and nobody'd even know. What, what if they never found you? All, all you'd be is a name on a list. There's the truck. Now shut your mouth and do your job, you hear me?
Gorman? Captain? How are things at battalion headquarters? Five by five, sir. Can't complain. How uh, nice for you. The general says he got another pickup. Uh, how many this time? Three. Cemetery Road? That's right. Mm. No mystery why they call it that. No, there's not. Here's the paperwork, Sergeant, uh, plus the letters for stateside. No problem. Pull the truck over there. Lincoln, you and Cook, load them up. Make sure they're tied down securely. Yes, sir. Well, I better get going while it's still light. They say there's a storm coming in. Gorman? Sir? Keep your eyes open on the road back. Sure will. No sweat, though. It's secure. Ah, that can change. Yes, sir. I guess it can. That man's always on the move. Better than sitting in one place. Stop by my quarters for a minute, will you, Tom? I want your opinion on something. What is it, sir? Take a look at this. A map of the mountain? And the surrounding area. Now, here's our position. The black circle to the north belongs to the enemy. Roughly everything from there to there. How roughly? Well, the last flyover was eight days ago. When's the chopper go up again? It's hard to say. According to command, it's too risky. The weather? The pilot would have to come in low because of the cloud cover and then pull up before he hits the peak. There's no room for error. You could call in a blanket airstrike. On what? Everything inside the black circle. We don't know their present location. If they've moved, the locals may have come back. Headquarters doesn't want to bomb civilians, and neither do I. So until the weather lifts, all you can do is send out more recon. And keep adding names to the list. Missing. Presumed dead. A terrible, terrible waste. It doesn't make sense. It does to the general. But Cemetery Road is a shooting gallery. Give me an alternative. Pull back for now, until we know more. Somebody has to hold this side. What if all they have is a few snipers up there? Then we better pray someone makes it far enough to find out. I don't like it. You think I do? We tried the Eastern Fork and we tried the West. We stopped before the road splits, and we sat there and we waited. It doesn't make any difference. At the very least, they have some well-placed spotters. Either that or... Or what? They're preparing for a large-scale attack. Possible, but unlikely. The road's too narrow. Exactly. Listen, forget Cemetery Road. That's where they expect us to fight them. You know what I'd do if I were the enemy? I'd spread out across the floor of the valley, then move up to attack our flank. That would cut off our supply line. They'd have us right where they want us, like sitting ducks. That would also put them out in the open. It's too dangerous. They love that it's dangerous. They don't care about casualties. But we're not sure they're in the valley. How can we be sure if they only come out at night? It's so dense they have all the cover they need. There's one way to know, absolutely. All it would take is one man, one. Say he climbs straight down from the camp, away from the mountain, with a night vision scope and a camera. Then command will have all the proof they need, because if I'm right, you know what he'll see? The entire floor of the valley, alive in the dark, like ants moving leaves. It just might work. Of course it would. Can you imagine how many lives that would save? It's not worth wasting any more. My men aren't pawns, they're flesh and blood. Oh, forgive me, Tom. For what, sir? I'm just spinning my wheels. We both know that that's not the way the Army thinks. Forget I said any of it. I, I guess I just had to blow off some steam. That ain't the way that women are over here. They have women here? <laughs> hey, Sarge. 
What? Can I get some fresh coffee? What's the matter with what you got? It's kind of cold. Well, I'll tell the waitress to make some special just for you. <laughs> Where's Lincoln? In the latrine, I bet. Maybe he locked himself in. Maybe he fell in. <laughs> Well, it's about time. Sorry I'm late, Sarge. Where you been, Private? Looking for the lieutenant. Yeah? Where is he? Search me. Sit down, Jack, before you fall down. Any of you guys seen him? Not me. Me neither. Captain wants to know. Well, I thought... You thought what, Cook? Oh, uh, nothing. The captain asked you a question. Well, it's like this. Uh, last night I was trying to get some shot eye, but I kept hearing a noise. So I looked around and... And what? I... I might have seen him. Where? Edge of camp. Had his pack on like he was heading out. But I know he wasn't on watch, and, and then all of a sudden he just disappeared. What do you mean? Well, he walked over to the rim, and that was it. He climbed down toward the valley? He must have. We're talking about Lieutenant Eddings. Yes, sir. You saw him do that? It sure looked like him. Why wasn't I informed? First I heard about it, Captain. You did a head count this morning? All here, except for the lieutenant. I thought he was helping you. The valley's off limits. You knew that, didn't you, Private? I, I figured he was going to do some stargazing. Why would you think that? He was carrying his night vision scope, which was funny, because there weren't no stars. You know how the clouds are. So thick you can't see the moon. Sergeant Lowe. Sir. I want you to put together a search party. Right away. And don't show your faces back here until you've found him. Are we clear? Redmond, Trulik, Hernandez, you heard the captain. Grab your gear. Yes, sir. All right. Come on, boss. General? Captain! No, sir. This is Second Lieutenant Reber. The captain's right here. Hold on. General Hostler on the line. Thank you, Reber. General? Captain! What's your status? Repeat, please. What's that? It's the weather. It bounces the signal around. Update your status. We are still holding position. Any further losses? No, sir. Well done. Prepare to break camp. Say again? I'm pulling you off the mountain. You can't do that, General. I want you back in battalion before the rainy season. Not now, sir. What? I thought you wanted Blue Company out of there. Not yet. If we retreat now, there'll be nothing to stop them. Uh, I'll, I'll lay down artillery fire once you're out. But, sir, I still have a squad in the field. What's the mission? One last recon. We're about to pinpoint the enemy. I'm sure of it. How much longer? As long as it takes, General. For now, I could use some support on the supply road so I can get everyone out if they cut us off. How much support? How much have you got? Well, I can spare a platoon, but only till your men are accounted for. Roger that, General. Sir. What is it, Reber? Did you say recon? That's a term the old man understands. It's been four days since the search party went out. Longer than that for Eddings. What's your point? Well... Shouldn't they be considered... Missing? Presumed dead? After so long, I thought... You thought wrong. Yes, sir. The next step is always a regret-to-inform letter. That seals it. I don't want to write any more of those. Not ever. Do you understand? I... suppose I do. With a little luck, maybe just this once, I can buy them enough time for a second chance. Evening, Captain. Hello, Reber. Where's the new platoon? Back by the supply road, cleaning their weapons. What do you think of them? They look like they'd shoot anything that moves. That's the problem. Then you're not going to send any of them down? With five of my men still out? Not unless I have to. No sign of them? Not yet. I'll call you on the walkie if I spot anything. Meanwhile, you ought to get some sleep, sir. I have two men standing watch. Which men? Privates Lincoln and Cook. Hey, 
Watch it. What's the matter? Somebody might see you. Like who? Somebody out there. Oh, yeah, I forgot. The boogeyman? You want one? Nope. Might help calm you down. I don't need to calm down. Maybe you do, boy. All I need to do is fast forward my butt out of here before... What was that? The wind. There ain't no wind tonight. Well, maybe you're hearing things. Douse the cigarette, soldier. Uh, evening, Captain. You know better than to light up out in the open. Sir, yes, sir. Anything to report? Nothing, sir. No movement down below? Not as such. You seem uncertain. Well, uh, sir, you know how your eyes can play tricks on you. If you're scared of the dark? Are you? Heck no. Uh, I, I always said the nighttime was the bright time. You know, Draco the dragon. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. Oh, well, I, I used to look at the stars when I was a kid. Had me a map that showed the constellations. Big Dipper, Little Dipper, Belt of Orion. I know them all. Plus, the meteor showers, where they was going to be. I just lay out in the backyard and wait. Sip. There goes another one. Sometimes I'd make a wish. Of course, the stars look different here. Art? Yeah. The captain doesn't want to hear your life story. Quiet. Huh? What was that? I didn't hear anything. Let's have a look with the glasses. You see something? I'm not sure. What was it? Some sort of movement in the tall grass. Yeah? Reber? I'm going down the side for a look around. Wait, sir. It may be nothing. I'll send some men. Negative. But Captain... No one else. Not this time. Stand by. We'll go with you. No. Uh, maybe the captain's right. He can't go alone. Cover me from here. But, Captain... And don't shoot any uniform that might be one of ours. Here. Use my glasses. Reber? Where are you, sir? About 300 yards. I can still see the camp. What else? Brush. Some trees on the ridge. Sir, we can do a sweep in the morning. Not on your life, or anyone else's. Captain, please. Hold on. What is that, sir? Wait. Hear that? You're breaking up. The storm's coming. <coughs> and that's not all. I'm sure of it. There! In the lightning. I thought I saw it. Who goes there? Identify yourself! Are you hearing this? Sergeant Lowe? Redmond, Hernandez, Krolik, did you find him? Where? What happened to you? Your uniforms. And your faces. Sergeant, why don't you answer? Bring your men in. That's an order! Yes. Yes, I understand. Did you get that? Get what? The enemy's coming from the north. A massive troop movement. We have 72 hours at most. Tell headquarters, Reber. Tell them now!
Staying it higher. You sure? Yeah, today we're flying over the peak. Well, I guess it's okay if we can see it. be along. You can set your watch by it. That's the truth. Every 15 minutes. That's all he does, walking back and forth, checking the valley. Sentries ain't good enough for him. Still nothing down there. But then why aren't we moving out? Ask him yourself. Here he comes. Private Cook. Yes, sir? Report. Uh, big fat zero. You're positive? Stone dead, Captain. What are we supposed to be... Be quiet. Sir. But, sir... Quiet. What is it? I thought I heard them. Who? Don't play dumb with me, Private. I'm not, sir. I, I mean... You know Sergeant Lowe, don't you? Know him? Why, why, sure. And Private Redman? Yeah. And Hernandez and Krolik and Lieutenant Eddings? We know all of them, sir. Or, or we did. Then you should have no trouble recognizing them. Huh? They may have trouble getting up the side. It's still muddy. Let me know at the first sign. Yes, yes sir. sir. Don't he know they're dead meat by now? I don't have time This for won't this. take long, Captain. I just need a word with you. What's this about? If you wouldn't mind sitting down for a minute. I have to get back to my watch. With all due respect, sir, we're running out of time. There's a big push coming from the north. We have aerial confirmation. Yeah, just as they said. Who? The men in the field. You heard them yourself. Sorry. I didn't. Afraid all I could hear was static. But you saw them. I don't know what I saw. When in the grass... Does wind have the ability to speak? Captain, all I know is... We have to break camp now, before sundown. The trucks from battalion are on the way. It's too soon. The order comes from the general himself. I'm still in command. Sir, you don't have a choice. We need to hold the perimeter. In a few hours, there'll be infantry here, plus heavy artillery. They won't need us. I can't leave. My men... There are 62 other men whose lives depend on it. 67. Five of whom are now missing and presumed dead. Isn't that true? I saw them. What did you see? Shadows? It was too dark. There was lightning. You saw what you wanted to see. How long since you've slept? They were there, I tell you. Lowe, Hernandez, Redmond, Krolik, and Eddings. You saw their faces? Some of them didn't have much left. Rotting away like their uniforms. But in the lightning... I saw burned skin and wounds, horrible wounds. They could barely walk. They were trying to get back. They must have... They must have 
lost their way. Some of us went down, sir, to the place where you were. We searched every inch of it with flashlights. There was nothing. Not even a mark in the grass. In that case... Yes, sir? Borrow men from the platoon. Make one last sweep. Several hundred yards to the ridge. And if they don't come back either? What? If they're shot at, or blown up, or burned, and you refuse to put them on the list, what do you think will happen? Do you honestly believe they'll wait till you decide? Not alive, but not dead either. That it all depends on you? Who has that kind of power? Please. Think! What if you never write another letter about another GI? Will they stay that way forever? The living dead? The undead? What if God Almighty goes on strike and nobody ever gets cut down again? For heart attacks or disease or old age or anything else? There'd be no room left on Earth. Is that really what you want? Then what? Listen to me. It's over. You can't save them all. They completed their mission. The time's come for them to rest. They've earned it. Then do one thing for me. If I can. Pray for them, Reaver. For the ones who didn't make it back. Glad to see me. Am I uh, New company's packed up and ready to roll. We'll turn around and head back as soon as I get everybody emptied out. We didn't leave them much. It's all right. We're going to camp out under the stars tonight. Tell them to make a wish. Sir, you're in the first vehicle, front seat. Thank you, Sergeant. How many men? 62. Exactly. See you at headquarters, Captain. Reber? Yes. I'd like you to ride with me. Doing fine, Gorman. You know, I got a thermos full of coffee if you want. No, thank you. Maybe just a drop. Knock yourself out. Some sight back there, huh? What's that? The truck's on our tail. Check the side mirror. Heads bobbing under the tarp every time they hit a bump. Somehow, I don't think they mind. Those drivers don't know the way like I do. Ever been to Chinatown, Sergeant? Which one? It doesn't matter. I was just thinking about Chinese New Year's. Yeah? They have those big paper dragons, you know, with five or six guys underneath to hold them up. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what all these trucks remind me of. Only here, it's canvas instead of paper. And there's a whole lot of guys. Look at them back there. Heads bouncing up and down. They're not sure where they're going. Lieutenant. Yes, sir. When we get back to battalion, I've got a lot of things to catch up on. You wouldn't by any chance know how to work a typewriter. Can't say that I do, Captain. But I can give it a try. Dear Mrs. Eddings, in the course of my military career, I never had the privilege of serving with so promising an officer as your husband. Such intelligence, bravery, and commitment are rarely encountered in the Army, or indeed anywhere else. 
I considered Tom Eddings a fine man and an outstanding first lieutenant. It is therefore with profound regret that I write today to inform you of his last selfless act of courage during an incident under my command. Incident on a Mountainside, a fable to file under ghost stories, or perhaps a brief side trip on the road to understanding. But however you view it, know that we can't forget the price paid by others in our name, or refuse to grant them the peace earned by their blood. Such matters never die, here or in the Twilight Zone. Thank you.